Welcome along guys, well we've got a beautiful day and today I am riding something a little bit different. I've had a lot of questions from people saying should they go electric, should they go petrol, should they go new or should they get more of a classic machine. So today I'm on my personal Kingship mower. Now this is a budget machine, this machine's done a lot of graft. As you can see it's probably in need of a, of a bit of restoration but uh, let's take it for a spin. We've got the weather. Let's see how she handles. The start-up procedure for this mower is quite simple. You pull the lever, you press the button. Ah, there we go, she fires into life. So first thing you notice is it's actually fairly quiet. This is 96 dB as listed on the back of the machine. They're obviously proud of that. That will get you on any, any track day in the UK basically with this. So pulling away, first thing you notice is the cut is actually fairly nice. For, a, for an old classic, that isn't doing too bad a cut there. Now, there's a little bit of off-road required on this test. We'll see how she copes with it. This is a thousand watt. So you'll be surprised what it can actually do. Now, this is one of the problems with this particular model. I've actually lost a wheel off this. The reason the wheel has actually fallen off is because this comes with a height adjustability. You've got three levels of height, manually adjustable. It's not electronically adjustable, but that gives you the option to raise the back of the, the mower, drop the front for that sporty, sporty look. Holding a line, it's actually pretty good. It tracks nicely. It's not too many vibrations. Oh, there goes the wheel again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, this isn't good. I don't know why you would need to make quick release wheels. Of all the things to have quick release, I think I've actually threaded that one. I'm going to have to probably helicoil that now. Oh my God, this is just ridiculous. If you want to get it in really tight to the edge, you've got to watch out. Obviously at the edge, you get all sorts of grip gravel. You've got to be careful when taking it in tight like that, but it holds the line beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. You don't need to spend Bosch money to get a good finish to your lawn. Being a thousand watt, it does mean... <laughs> oh, you can have a bit of fun with it, but uh, be careful. You could get thrown off the back quite easily. Oh, come on. The throttle is actually a little bit sticky on it. The switch gear as a whole is pretty cheap looking. If you do take it off road, just be careful. You know, the ground clearance can be an issue with these. You know, it's height adjustable. So you could potentially raise it if you need to, but when going off road, just be aware that the height can be a bit low if you've got it set in the lower position. Well, another problem I'm facing is the actual cord length. You know, this is the problem with electric. You're, you're, unless you've gone battery, you're restricted by the flex length and uh, I'm hitting the limits of this machine here. Even in a relatively small, tight garden like this, I'm still taking this machine to the max. The electronics on this, well, you just literally have the motor and that's all. There's no... Well, it does have some cruise control. You can remove your throttle hand temporarily and it will keep spinning, it will keep running. But I think that's more of a, an issue with a sticky throttle than any fancy electronics. Uh, that, that is the other problem you have to watch. If you do have pets in your house, you need to watch the turds. These really need to be collected prior to starting the mowing, or you're gonna get yourself, oh, another one. You're gonna get yourself in all sorts of trouble. The shit could hit the fan, or the blade. Now, I think my hopper is probably, yes, it's full. It only has a 20 litre hopper on this machine, so you're a little bit restricted on capacity. We'll just mow that, we'll just see how it gets on with that, how it handles the feces, it does it very well indeed. What else can I tell you about this machine, let me just check the specs here. No heated grips unfortunately, like I say cruise control to a fashion but it doesn't work great. Cutting width is 330 millimetres, so not too bad, I'd say that was average. So how much will one of these beauties cost you? Well this cost me £35. That was about two years ago. I think it was something like seven pound a month on PCP with a final payment of 20 pounds. So, you know, if, if you're a little bit tight on budget, oh, I've reached the flex lengths again, then you know, this, this is affordable. 
I would say there wasn't anyone who couldn't afford one of these on PCP. What we'll do in a minute, when I get somewhere suitable, we'll just stop and I'll give you a little quick walk around of this machine. So there she is, the Kingfisher FPL 1000-4 rolls off the tongue. This one probably isn't the best condition. This is a used test review, not a new review. I could probably see uh, some sort of restoration coming on on this one fairly soon in the garage. Perhaps the next garage build series. Key features, wheels as I mentioned are adjustable. You can also, that means you can adjust the weight bias of the machine, have it more forward, more weight at the front for better handling around corners or, you can, or, or even to prevent the wheelies, drop the front, stop the wheelies. We have the model name proudly displayed on the front here, the FPL M1000-4. Ideally, we'd all love a nice little two-stroke, but they're not always practical. If you've got to do the sort of maintenance which I do on my lawnmowers, then it really needs to be robust. It needs to be operating under any... This doesn't... I don't even have a shed. This actually lives under a, an overhang all winter, and it still runs. So that's a bit of a testament to the quality of the FPL M1000-4.